All right, first alert meteorologist John Birchfield here live on the WTOL 11 YouTube channel uh, doing our next edition of Weather Hangout Kids Edition. Um, you may have gotten a notification a couple minutes ago. This is take number two, but looks like we are all set to go with our live this time doing some DIY science experiments. So I'm going to wait for a few more viewers to come on through. Um, leave your comments down below. Hopefully that is up and running. Um, we're going to be doing some tornado in a bottle, um, tornado in a mason jar, as well as some shaving cream clouds. So some pretty fun science experiments here. I'm um, going to see until we have a few more viewers and maybe some comments coming on through before we start the experiments. So I kind of want to give you a preview of what we're going to talk about today. I've actually got a close-up webcam of some of the ingredients we're going to be using here for these science experiments. So you can see we're all set and ready to go for experiment number one here. Um, and of course, I'm going to toggle back and forth between this to share some information on these experiments and kind of explain them and the science behind them. So we've got Heather tuning in. Hello, Heather. Hope you're having a good one so far. Thanks for joining us. Um, and of course, this is geared towards kids especially. So let us know what school district you're a part of. Um, how is your homeschool going so far um, ever since you know, we've been doing remote school and remote learning. Um, hope everything is going well in your life right now. We're going to be doing some fun science experiments for the kids and the families alike. So as I just showed a moment ago, um, got a few experiment ingredients already set up here. We've got some shaving cream, some food coloring, and a mason jar. So we're going to be using all of those here for our live weather hangout kids edition. Um, hope you're joining us and enjoying your week so far. Um, I'm doing pretty well, Heather. Thanks for asking. And we've got another viewer here that says hi, hello, and hope you're having a good one so far. Um, I'm going to actually send out another push alert to the first alert weather app. The first one was a little bit, a little bit buggy. Um, so you know how technology goes. The first time I tried to go live, uh, we were having a few issues there. So if you just bear with me for a second, I promise we're going to have some cool science experiments in just a bit. Going to send out another push alert to that first alert weather app. And in the meantime, you can see we've got all of our ingredients ready to go. And we're going to be doing the first experiment, which is shaving cream rain clouds. So um, anyone do any of these science experiments before? Um, do you have any fun science experiment recommendations yourself? Because I'm always interested in learning a little bit more um, and, and learning some experiments that I can take with me on some of the school visits that I do that especially pertain to weather and science. Okay, we've got a lot of comments coming on through. Actually not going to send that uh, extra push alert out. Um, I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. Robert says we got you. Um, hey, Sarah, I hope you're having a good one in Sylvania. I actually went to Sylvania school, so I'm a native. Sil is it Sylvanian? Sylvanian? I should know that. But um, thanks for tuning in. Glad to see the comments coming through. Um, Mrs. Yunker from third grade Napoleon Elementary. You know, a lot of these experiments are going to be perfect for third graders. Shaving cream rain clouds can get a little bit messy, just want to give you a heads up, but I promise it's worth it. Um, and I've got the close up of some of the ingredients. So we're going to get a head start. I've got some comments coming on through. I was a little bit worried the first live stream was kind of bugging out on me, but we do have um, comments coming in, so that's a good sign. So these experiments are going to be appropriate for pretty much any age group, although, warning, this one can get a little bit messy. So we're going to use some food coloring here. Um, personally, I, I really like the neon food coloring, but this one will do. We've got red, yellow, green, and blue. Um, shaving cream, this is an essential ingredient. That's what we're going to be making the clouds out of. And then the mason jar is going to be kind of representative of the air itself. So basically, we'll be making some clouds out of shaving cream, putting some food coloring in, and the food coloring is going to represent some raindrops. So just by a show of hands, or I guess um, a comment on the YouTube section, anyone do this experiment before or make shaving cream clouds before? I'm reading through a few of your comments. Um, Heather says, I did the shaving cream rain cloud with my teacher. Yeah, Heather, this is a real fun one to do. Um, I always bring in the shaving cream rain clouds when I go on elementary school visits or middle school or high schoolers. They all like it too. Um, just make sure you got some paper towels. I've got paper towels over off by the side because I do have some technology here that I do not want. I do not want shaving cream on and I do not want food coloring on either. All right, I'm going to read through a few of your comments before we get a head start on the science experiment. Um, I create a lot of videos about science experiments for my students. Yeah, that's really cool. And I hope that this video can go through some of those science experiments. And even when the live stream is done, um, something you can play back and do some of those experiments with you. Um, Julie says, you have done this one, Kendall. Um, yeah, this is an experiment I, I've seen on and off, but 
A lot of times, um, the kids, when I go in to do these visits, they haven't really done it before. So we're gonna start off by going through some of the ingredients you need for this one. So the main, um, really simple ingredients you need are a mason jar. Uh, this is something a lot of you probably already have at home. You don't really need to go out to the store to get a mason jar. But if you don't have a mason jar, any sort of cup or mug will do. Uh, just make sure the sides are clear and transparent so the kids can see on through there and see the rain in action. So you need some water. Uh, I filled this up about halfway. I'm gonna go to the close-up webcam there. So I don't know if you can see, but I filled this about halfway up with water right there, um, just so that we have a little extra space for the shaving cream cloud to go on through. Um, other ingredients that you need, the food coloring, of course, and I do recommend the neon food coloring. That one's just a little more exciting, a little more vibrant, a little brighter. Uh, the one I got here should do. I've got red, yellow, green, and blue. So that's enough colors we can have some fun with. Heather says, I love science experiments. Um, Chris, Chris Scarberry, thanks for joining us here on this Thursday morning. I'm um, glad a few of you have done the comments before. Uh, Brittany's joining us from Toledo. We've got Kaylin from Waterville. All right, sounds like we've got a pretty good crowd here, so we're going to get started with this science experiment. So I'm going to go back to the close-up webcam. So as I said before, the mason jar is kind of going to represent the air itself, and then the shaving cream is going to represent the cloud on top of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to gently put some shaving cream here on top of the water, and that's going to represent the cloud. There we go. So we're forming a cloud basically out of the shaving cream. It kind of does look like a puffy cumulus cloud. Kind of a little bit noisy here, but I don't know if you can see the cloud there. So we've got a cloud on top of um, what is representative of the atmosphere right there. So the water is where the rain is going to fall basically through the atmosphere and the, the white shaving cream there, uh, that's the cloud. So let me know in the comments, can you see what's going on so far? Can you see the experiment in demonstration? Um, so far we've got, we've got the shaving cream on top of the water. Um, let's make sure that we can see this right now. So Chris says, I'm not in school, but still learning even though I'm 35. Yeah, it's important. Never stop learning. I think these experiments are really cool for any ages. Um, so I'm going to periodically pull it up in front of the camera here. I don't know if you can see the mason jar right in front of me, but I also do have the close-up camera shot that I think is going to be a little bit cooler and also less risk for damaging my electronics there. So just pulling that up, you can see it in front of the webcam. Um, we've got the shaving cream, which is the cloud, and then beneath that, that is representing the air or the atmosphere. So I'm gonna go back to the close-up webcam here, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some food coloring on top of the shaving cream. The food coloring is gonna represent our rain. Basically, the cloud or the shaving cream is gonna become so full of water, so full of moisture, that it's gonna rain that on out, and you'll see that rain in action in just a bit. So I'm gonna switch on over to the close-up webcam. All right, I got my food coloring right here and you can see the shaving cream cloud um, right there. There might be a few seconds of a delay, but I hope the live stream um, still up and running. Let's make sure you can all see it. Um, so we've got Tyler tuning in. He says, this is my first time watching. I'm super excited. Glad to hear it, Tyler. I'm kind of excited to do this too. You know, Tyler, if you can respond, I'll let you pick the color that we do for this. These are our options. We've got red, yellow, blue, and green. So if you have a preference, Tyler, um, let me know what color you'd like to do and we will get a head start on this experiment. So Nyla's also joining us, excited. So basically, for those of you just tuning in, really simple science experiment. We got a mason jar, filled it up about halfway with water, put a little bit of shaving cream on top. Um, for this experiment in particular, the shaving cream we're gonna wanna use is kind of a foam shaving cream. So this one's just a generic brand, uh, but the Barbasol works just as well. So if you have any preference as to what kind of um, what kind of um, color you want to use, let me know. I'm waiting for a few comments to come on through. Hopefully the live stream's still going. It looks like it was glitching out there for a second. Um, but we are about to make the rain cloud here. So Nyla says you can see it. Um, okay, so we've got blue. Blue is the color we're going to do. Thanks for casting your vote there, Tyler. Um, we're going to get back to the close-up webcam and put a little blue in this. All right, so I got a few different shades of food coloring. This one is blue. Basically, we're just going to drop a few drops here. It's going to take a little while for it to go on through, but I don't know if you can see if I tip this in your direction. We did put a little bit of blue food coloring in there. So basically, the cloud is going to become full of water. It's going to become full of moisture, and eventually there's going to be so much moisture weighing down the cloud that it's going to have to start raining down um, through the water. So it's going to take just a couple seconds, but once that food coloring does sort of get on through, you're going to see it starting to rain. So blue is our first color choice. I do have a few more colors, 
and I also do have another demonstration. Um, so we can do another one that's a different color. Maybe I put a little, okay, there we go. It all came at once. So the cloud basically becomes so saturated, became so full of water that it's starting to rain on down. So this is kind of representing, you know, a gray rain cloud that becomes so full of moisture that it has nowhere else to go but down and it just rains, dumps out all of that moisture. So this one, that kind of escalated quickly. We started off with just a few drops of food coloring near the top and then it all just poured on down rain to the side. So let me know, did you see that one okay? Did you see the demonstration? Um, Heather wants to know, can we do green? So Heather, I do think we'll do green for the next one. We got a lot of votes for blue though, so I'm glad you like the blue. Um, Katarina voted for blue. I think blue is a pretty color. Looks kind of like rain. You know, if we do if we do green or red, that doesn't really look as much like rain, but I think blue looks a little bit more representative of it. All right, so we're gonna do the green one in just a second. I wanna read through a few of your comments though. Nyla says that was so cool. Um, I thought it was cool too. You know, these are good experiments for the kids, good for grade school, but adults can geek out over them as well. Tyler, glad you like the blue one. We're gonna be doing a green one in just a bit, but blue is a pretty popular vote, so glad you like that one. Okay, we've got a comment that says, my son, Crew, is tuning in from Elmore. Hey, Crew, hope I pronounced that right. Hope you're having a good one so far, and you're celebrating your third birthday. Oh, happy birthday to you. I've done these experiments with, with two and three-year-olds before. It does get a little messy, but I think they're pretty neat to do with any age group. All right, so we're gonna get experiment number two going, and this one will kind of be a little better for those who may be just tuning in and kind of missed out on some of the steps. So we start off with a mason jar that's about halfway full of water. Um, we wanna save a little bit of room near the top for that shaving cream to go on through. See, I got a little bit on my hand. It is a little messy. At least it's just shaving cream and not um, and not the, the food coloring. That would be a little bit messier. So we're gonna start off by taking the can of shaving cream, which I showed you just a second ago, or shave foam, um, and we're gonna be filling that up to make the cloud. So I'm gonna use a little bit less shaving cream than this one, just so that it is um, so that it goes through a little more quickly. But we're making a nice puffy cumulus cloud. This is picture of summer day where you've got those puffy clouds just forming. It's warm and humid outside and just kind of looks like it wants to rain. So green appear, green seems to be our next popular vote. So we're gonna do a green one here. Um, hopefully you can see the food coloring drops going on in. I'm dropping them right there. And it's gonna take a little bit for that cloud to become full of moisture, to become fully saturated as we call it. But then once it is, it just pours down rain. So this is basically one of those gray storm clouds or green in this case. And you can really see that green rain coming on down. Now this is not the real color of rain. I think it's kind of neat, but I'd be a little bit terrified if I saw it was raining green. But basically we've got a cloud here, so full of water, so full of moisture, and it just dumps that rain on down. So let me know if you saw the green one okay. We started off with blue um, and then we did green. So we've got a request for red and blue together. Um, that one does sound kind of neat, red and blue together, but I've got to save my other mason jars for our next experiment. Um, so glad you got to see the green one. We are gonna move on to our next experiment here, which is mason jar tornadoes. So in my opinion, this one's even easier than the first one. You don't need shaving cream, you don't need food coloring. Really all you need is a mason jar and some water, and there's a few additional ingredients that can make it a little bit neater. So what I'm gonna start off with is just a plain old mason jar full of water. Um, I'm gonna hold it right out in front of me here, uh, but I'll use the close-up cam in just a bit. So, so remember how for the, for the shaving cream clouds, we filled that about halfway up. So for this one, I'd say fill it up a little bit more. Um, I've got it filled up probably about two thirds or three fourths of the way on through. Um, the reason for that is, you know, we're not gonna have to put any shaving cream on top. So for this one, there's a little bit more minimal ingredient requirements. Uh, so I'd say this one's a little bit simpler. So we got our mason jar over here and I do have another one. This one's a smaller mason jar. So we're gonna be doing a couple demonstrations of this, which is the mason jar tornado. All right, who's excited for mason jar tornadoes? I think this one is pretty neat um, and maybe even cooler than the first experiment. So we're gonna go over the ingredients here or the things you'll need, and you should already have really all these at home. Um, so for the mason jar tornado, obviously you need a mason jar, which most folks probably do have at home. You need some water, of course. I filled that up about two thirds or three fourths of the way on through. Um, you'll need some dish soap. This one's not necessarily required, but what the dish soap does is it makes it a little bit more visible. It makes you um, able to see the tornado just a little bit better. And glitter, of course, who doesn't love glitter? It's a nice touch that makes it just a little bit more sparkly, a little more exciting for the kids. 
So what we're gonna do, um, I'm gonna show you the full screen webcam if you can see that right there. So we've got our mason jar full of water. So I'm gonna show you the simple way first. The simple way to do this experiment, all you really need is that mason jar, um, some water, and that's about it. So I'll show you what it looks like just with the water. It's not quite as neat as it will be otherwise, but you can see that tornado forming. There's a little bit of that spinning motion um, that's causing the tornado to form. So really, this is just a mason jar filled with water and you can make a tornado. Now we're gonna get a little more elaborate with it in a second, but I think this is pretty cool in and of itself. Um, I don't know if you can see that spinning there, but leave your comments on YouTube. Um, I wanna make sure you can see this demonstration right here. But you're basically just spinning around the mason jar. You're sort of sim simulating that rotation that would take place during a, um, a tornado or during a strong thunderstorm. That's not the webcam we want, right there. Okay, um, hey, glad Connor's excited for this one. I'm reading through a few of your comments here on YouTube. We just did the basic water mason jar tornado experiment but I do promise you it's gonna get even cooler from here. We're gonna add the dish soap, and I've even got a little bit of a color um, addition that we're gonna do with this. Um, glad that you can see it, Nyla. Um, Kendall says I can see it. All right, here we go. So I'm gonna get back to the full screen. Do I wanna do the full screen webcam? We'll actually try the close up here. So for this one, we've obviously got our mason jars full of water. That's really all you need to do a basic tornado in a mason jar, but we're gonna add a little bit of dish soap so this is just the kind of dish soap that you use for cleaning dishes in the sink. Um, and what the dish soap's gonna do is it's gonna make it just a little bit more visible. So I'm gonna switch back to the full screen webcam. There we go. All right, so we've got our mason jar. So for this version of the experiment, we're gonna add a little bit of dish soap, which I think is gonna make it just a little bit more visible and a little bit more exciting for the kids. So we don't wanna do a ton of dish soap. Actually, just two or three drops is really enough but what the dish soap does is it just makes that tornado, it makes that rotation just a touch more visible. So I'm just gonna do a couple little dollops of dish soap, not too much, just a few drops in there. And I know it doesn't really look like much now, but I promise you when we start to spin it around, it is gonna look really, really neat, and you're gonna be able to see it a little bit more visibly. So who can see the experiment going on so far? We've got um, Edward and Tyler tuning in, Nyla, Kendall, uh, thanks for joining us. Let's get started with the dish soap. So the dish soap doesn't really represent anything in terms of the weather, but what we're looking at here in terms of um, the science behind it is during a strong thunderstorm, a lot of times the storm rotates a little bit, and when there's enough rotation, uh, you get a funnel cloud that forms up high in the clouds, and sometimes that can go down to the ground and form a tornado. So the dish soap, I think, just is gonna make it a little bit more visible here. There we go. See, it just looks a little bit more like a tornado. Um, looks a little more of that milky white color. So I think this dish soap really adds a nice touch to the experiment. And it's something you probably already have at home, so I would definitely recommend it um, on here. Now, one thing I will warn you about is if you spin it around too many times, if you go four, five, six runs, um, the dish soap can kind of get a little bit too foamy and it can, it can cloud the vision. So I'm trying not to get too aggressive with it. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's at least an EF3. Yeah, but I think the dish soap's a nice touch there, um, and it can make it just a little bit more visible and easier for the kids to see. But like I said, if you do it too many times, it can get a little bit clouded up there. So you kind of got to be careful um, not to overdo it. But I think, I think it's a pretty cool experiment. Did anyone see this one? Oh, God. So Sarah says, put a toy shark in it, Sharknado. You know, I don't have any toy, toy sharks on hand, but more power to you if you want to do put something else in. Uh, but what we're going to do now is we're going to add, you know how I said that glitter is one of the ingredients. Um, I don't happen to have any glitter at home, but what I do have is a little bit of the um, little, I don't know if it's called confectioner's, confectioner's sugar, decorating sugar. So this one's just those little blue sugar crystals that you might use to decorate cookies. Um, so what I'm actually going to do for this one so we've got our plain old mason jar, and like I showed you, you can just do this with plain old water. It's not quite as visible or apparent as it is with the dish soap, but what we're gonna do for this rendition of the experiment is we're gonna add the dish soap, a couple drops of dish soap, just to make it more um, visible and white in color, and then I'm gonna add a little bit of this blue decorating sugar. So you can use glitter. I think glitter would probably be a little bit more exciting. I didn't happen to have any glitter on hand, but this is gonna kind of represent the debris or the, the dirt that a tornado can pick up. So tornadoes have very, very strong winds. As we talked about a couple weeks ago with our weather hangout, um, there have been tornadoes with wind speeds over 300 miles an hour. So with wind speeds like that, tornadoes can pick up what we call debris. Um, if a tornado just goes through a field of crops, it can pick up the crops, it can pick up dirt and dust. And of course, 
tornadoes that go through residential areas can have more severe impacts. But this one, um, the, the little glitter or the, or the decorating sugar, that's gonna kind of represent the debris that a tornado can pick up. So I hope you can see it there. At the bottom, it's kind of neat because that, that um, those little sugar crystals are actually kind of swirling around. I'm gonna switch on over to the close-up cam and hopefully this one makes it just a little bit more visible. Close-up webcam, there we go. All right, so I think on this run through, you're gonna be able to see, um, you're gonna be able to see that we do have those little crystals spinning around at the bottom. Let's put it down there. There you go. I think that looks pretty cool. So that's a tornado, and you can see the, um, the little sugar crystals are spinning around, kind of representative of the debris that might occur in an actual tornado. So hopefully you like that close-up shot. Um, I think it's pretty cool to visually represent a tornado and kind of see that rotation that occurs. Um, and keep in mind during tornadoes, sometimes the wind speeds are 100 to maybe even 200 miles an hour, and it's sort of just swirling around and around. So hopefully you like that experiment. Um, Andy's tuning in, Aaron says, I like it. Yeah, Aaron, this is a real fun one for the kids, and it's so, so simple. Even simpler than the shaving cream rain clouds. Really, you can do it with just a plain old mason jar and some water. I think the dish soap's a nice addition, and if you want to throw in a toy shark, you know, go for it. I'm not gonna, not gonna judge that. I think that's a cool demonstration to put a little glitter in it, uh, maybe some decorating sugar, really anything that you want to demonstrate. So I'm gonna do one more run through this. I'm gonna go back to the full screen one. So this is the one with dish soap. It's got some glitter or, um, or sugar at the bottom. And this, this one um, we demonstrated a minute ago. Hopefully it's not too foamy with all of the dish soap that's been in there. But you can kind of see it. It's get, it gets a little bit murky over time. Let me try the other one that we did just a second ago. So this is the bigger mason jar. Um, this one just had plain old dish soap in it. But um, there we go. I think that one's pretty cool. But if you do it too many times or too many run-throughs, it can get a little bit foamy with all of that um, with all of that dish soap in there. All right, so we got that done. Let's move on to our third experiment here. So our third one is going to be tornado in a bottle. This is one that a lot of you have probably seen before. It's pretty simple. It's pretty fun. Um, and I've already got this demonstration set up. So we're going to talk about that one in just a sec. Um, Ella says that is so cool. Hey Ella, glad you liked that experiment. I think it's pretty cool. It's also really simple. And if you don't have a mason jar, you can just use any sort of glass container that closes. Um, Tupperware probably would work, but I think a mason jar is really easy, really simple, and it's something a lot of you probably already have. So Julie, okay, before we get on to the next experiment, um, Julie asked, what if you put food coloring in it? All right, we're gonna try it with food coloring, Julie, just to entertain you here. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the one that we just demonstrated that already has a little bit of that dish soap in there. Let's go over to the full screen webcam. So Julie, we're gonna do a color that we haven't done before. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit of red food coloring into this one. So now food coloring is one of the optional additions that you can use for the, for the tornadoes. Um, so I'm gonna add some red food coloring and we're gonna see how this works out. So just bear with me for a second. I'm gonna put a few drops of food coloring. Hopefully this one's not too murky from all of the dish soap that went into it. And if this spills, my white couch is absolutely ruined. So this is for you, Julie. Ooh, that's kind of pretty. It's a little bit harder to see this one just because um, there was so much dish soap in it. So maybe if we started from scratch, it would be a little bit more visible but I can still see it here. I don't know if you can see the rotation there. Um, there's a lot of foam going on at the top. All right, I'm gonna try a different color with the other mason jar. So we've got, um, we've got the red one right there, but we're gonna try adding a little bit of different color food coloring to this one. So the one color we haven't used, I think this is yellow actually. No, this is more of an orangish color. So you can see the drops going on into there. I'm gonna go back to the full screen webcam um, and I'm gonna show you if this one works out. I hope that it does. So this is the one with a little bit of a yellowish orange food coloring dish soap. All right, this one might be a little too, ooh, I can see that. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that here on YouTube. Um, hopefully it's visible. I'm gonna do this one for the close-up cam here. Maybe that'll make it a little bit more visible. So let's spin it around a little bit. Yeah, you can kind of see that tornado forming. Obviously yellow tornadoes, probably not something you're gonna see in real life, but I still think that's um, a pretty cool demonstration there. So a few more of your comments here. Julie says, thank you so much. My third grader's on here. Oh, glad that, glad that your kid likes it. I think it's a pretty cool one. It's pretty easy, pretty clean. Uh, when you add the food coloring, it can get a little bit messy. 
I see that I've got some green stains all over my hands, but it's worth it in the name of science. We got a few more tuning in. Uh, glad you can see the one with the food coloring. We're going to get on to our last demonstration here. Um, I think this one's pretty neat. It might not be quite as flashy as the, the shaving cream rain clouds, but tornado in a bottle is a classic. So I've actually already got my tornado in a bottle built right here. I'm going to pull this over in front of the laptop. Um, also, would not recommend doing this around electronics. Um, just do it somewhere safe. Maybe lay out some newspapers or a, a towel, something that'll help stop up the moisture if it does spill just a little bit. So tornado in a bottle, I've got that demonstration. Good to go. For those of you not familiar with this, it's pretty simple, but it will require a, a material that you probably don't already have at home. So for this one, you're going to need two bottles. They don't necessarily need to be two liter bottles. Um, the ones I have, I think, are actually liter bottles. You could even use something as small as um, a little like Dasani or Aquafina bottle of water. Um, and you are going to need a little connector. So see the link in the description below. Um, you will need that little connector, which is the green tube that connects the two bottles. Um, that's easily able, you can buy that on Amazon for just a buck or two. So if you do decide that you want to do this for your kids, uh, maybe down the road this is an experiment you want to show to your class, um, definitely worth getting the little connector tube there um, for this demonstration. So just by a show of hands or anyone in the comments, have you ever done this experiment before? Have you ever done a tornado in a bottle? It is a pretty fun one. Um, Sherry, so for this one, you just need two bottles. They can be one liter, two liter bottles. They can be even just little bottles of water, but you will need that connector cable. And down in the description below of this YouTube video, there should be instructions on how to do that or how, on how to get the connector cable. So I'm gonna go back to the full screen one. I'm probably gonna move my laptop a little bit right here because I do not want anything to malfunction. Um, so we're gonna, do the demonstration here on the full screen webcam. Hopefully this is visible. So you're just gonna wanna shake it around a few times, kind of to represent that rotating air again. Come on now. There we go, we got a little rope tornado. That's a small tornado. We're gonna do it again, but um, basically by spinning that around and around, you're representing the rotation that might occur during a tornado. Let's see if we can finish off strong with this one. So a little bit of rotation there. It might be cooler if you do it with a two liter bottle because you get a little bit of a bigger tornado. And this is another one of those experiments. You actually could add some dish soap or some food coloring to make it a little more flashy. Uh, mine just has plain old water, but even just by rotating it with, with just water, you can see, okay, this is a better one. This one's definitely better. That's an EF4, I'd say. Um, but yeah, pretty cool demonstration. Let me know in the YouTube comments if you're able to see that one okay. I'm um, glad it worked. It didn't spill on anything. That's always a nice plus. But um, Okay, so we got a question about where to get the connector. Um, only on Amazon? Not necessarily. You can buy it on another online retailer. I want to say, don't quote me on this, but I want to say that I've seen something like this at a Walmart before. Um, probably not something you're going to find really easily. So I recommend just you know, buying one on Amazon. Uh, I've got the description in the link below um, with a link to, to the Amazon site to buy it. It's just a couple bucks, but um, definitely worth it if you're gonna be showing this multiple times or if you've got a class or a school that you're gonna be doing this for. Um, so we're gonna show it one more time. Nihilus says that was cool. Hey, glad you liked it. You know, I, it's not quite as colorful, but I still think it's good. Um, we're gonna do this one one more time. Let's get that full screen webcam going. So again, we're rotating it around, kind of simulating that spinning in the atmosphere. And there we go. That one was a weak tornado. There we go. So we've got a little bit of a tornado forming there. Um, and again, you've got to kind of, kind of move it around yourself, kind of like we did with the mason jar, except this one might, might have to be a little bit more aggressive with it. And you can also add dish soap. That is a good one right there. That is a nice, strong tornado. But um, you, you can also probably add dish soap or food coloring to this one. Just beware that those connector cables, they're nice, but they are not infallible. Sometimes the water spills a little bit. So that's why I did this one with just water. I uh, didn't want to risk anything else. Didn't want to risk anything else going out there. But um, yeah, hope you like some of those experiments. Um, Christine says, very fun on a gloomy morning. Glad you liked the demonstrations, Christine. Um, I hope that we got a lot of viewers here and some fun science experiments. I got to get ready for the noon show. Tune in to WTOL, um, turn on channel 11. We've got a sunny weekend forecast coming up at noon. So if you like it sunny, you like it warm, um, good news for you in that forecast. Hope you enjoyed this live video. We're going to end the stream for now um, and hope you have a good weekend. Take care.